more time. Sooner or later, sooner or later, he'll turn in thy face. Sing it one more time. Sooner or later, he'll turn in my face. This is my own version. I know that right now. Yeah. He'll turn it in my favor. I know right, right now. He'll turn in my favor. I know right, right now. He'll turn in my favor. He's turning around for me. Wave your hands and just give God praise. Bless Him for what He's going to do tonight. Come on, pray like you came for a miracle service. I know that right now you are turning my situation. You are changing my story. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, now faith is. Now faith is. My faith says yes. My faith says it is right now. It cannot be tomorrow. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. How many of us are excited to be in March Miracle Service? Come on, make your excitement loud enough. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. First of all, let me apologize for the little hitch we are having with the media and the sound. Um, you know, equipment, you can't trust them sometimes. But we are here, and I believe that God will visit us, regardless of what is happening or what is not happening. Amen. I just want to do something, and then we'll pray before we sit down. You know, miracle services are usually instructional because every time God would do something to bring change to the life of a man, he sends his word. And your part is to carry out in obedience the word that is sent to you. Are we together? So I beg you tonight, whatever the Lord asks us to do, do it. Mary told the servants at the wedding in Cana, she said, whatever he says to you, do it. Are we together? So when I say pray, I need you to pray. Don't pray because that's what they are doing right now in the service. Pray because you came with an expectation. You can't leave your homes, leave your comfort and come here and go back the same. No. No. Are we together? So whatever I instruct us to do by the Holy Spirit, I want us to do it. And I trust the Lord that His name will be glorified in this place. I trust the Lord that there will be miracles, there will be signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, the resident pastor from Total Gospel Mission is here. Pastor Mrs. Victoria, can we honor God for her? Welcome, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. And she came with someone. God bless you for coming. Thank you so much. I'm surprised, actually. But you're welcome. I salute every man of God, woman of God that is here. Thank you. And God bless you. Are we together? Luke chapter 17, two prayer points and then we sit down. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. Luke chapter 17, verse 11. Is that verse 11? Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Go on. We're reading to 15. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And, and they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Can we say what they said together? One to go. Jesus, Master, So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. The first prayer point tonight is the previous verse, verse 13. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. 
When you pray the prayer of mercy, you are not praying it because you need your sins to be forgiven alone. Mercy is like a blank check. The prayer of mercy can activate many things in the kingdom. The prayer of mercy means that God should favor you. The prayer of mercy means that God should visit your business. The prayer of mercy means that God should visit your family. It's an, it, it, it's, it's, what, what do you call, what's the word I will use now? It's, 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 it's an all-round kind of prayer. Now the Bible says that these guys were lepers. Meaning that naturally speaking, they had a deformity that was going to separate them from their miracle. There were some natural barriers holding them away from their miracle. Now, I may not touch you tonight, physically speaking, but from where you are, wherever you are seated, whether inside or outside, I want you to cry like they cry. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Lift your voice and cry unto him. Have mercy on me. Have mercy. It says, Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion, for at the time to favor her, yea, the set time has come. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Are you praying? Come on, together as a family of faith, let's lift our voice and pray. Call upon the name of the Lord. Have mercy upon my family, upon my business, upon my marriage upon my body my health have mercy upon my children upon my spouse upon my ministry mercy that will around that i will shift to another level lift your voice and pray Mambras que prende guile de brosca pajaria y la branzo brajada la capa prensi capai. Visit me tonight by your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Luke chapter 18, verse 41 to 45. Second prayer point and then we'll sit down. Please, I'd like you to pray with every faith that you can muster inside of you. If you truly believe that you came before God, not for a program, I want you to pray like there's fire on the mountain. Are we together? They cried out. And that was why Jesus heard them. They were not whispering. The Bible says they cried out. Sometimes desperate times will call for desperate measures. And the vocality of your prayers is the expression of your faith. Luke chapter 18 verse 41. Saying. This was the story of Jesus and his encounter with blind Bartimaeus. And just like the ten lepers, when Jesus was passing by, blind Bartimaeus lifted up his voice and cried. The more he cried, the more they tried to hush him to be quiet. But the Bible says he kept on crying. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. And his cry got to the ears of the master. And hear what happens. Saying, Jesus speaking to him now. What do you want me to do for you? He said. And Jesus is asking somebody that question this night. Thank God for coming from your homes, from wherever it is that you came for today's meeting. But God is asking you a question. What do you want me to do for you? If you want me to just pass your way, and then you know that I'm around, that's all. That's what I will do. But if you want me to touch your situation, if you want me to arise and change your situation, like he did with Jacob in one night's encounter, Jesus is asking a question. He says, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Next verse. Then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith, you well. Whatever you came with tonight, believing God to do for you. Or believing God to touch in your life. Lift up your voice in the next two minutes. And I want you to table it before God. Some of you came to encounter a fresh fire from God. 
a fresh visitation of his anointing some of you came because you need a shift in ministry some of you came because your business must open up to abundance some of you came because you are tired of where you are you are tired of stagnation you are tired of retrogression you are tired of rising today and falling tomorrow lift your voice and table your requests blind Bartimaeus cried out to him open your mouth and cry to him Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Hela baraka basia kabala da barada basi. Just the symbols, please. Father, visit your children. Let the gates of their destiny open up. Let every chain be broken. Let oppression come to an end. Let them receive of the fullness of the anointing. Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please, you can have your seat. Sound people, please help the keyboard. I need the volume to be up. Look to your left and your right and tell your neighbor you are in for a big surprise tonight. Amen. The Bible says he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Whenever God gathers his people, it is because he has something definite to give to them. It is because he has prepared a feast for them. And tonight I welcome you to this wonderful, mind-blowing miracle service. And I trust that God will have his way in our lives. I trust that God will visit everyone here. I pray that everyone will go with a miracle and with a touch from God in Jesus' name. Amen. Those online that are following from different parts of this nation and beyond, you're welcome. Whether you're watching by Facebook or by live audio transmission or by YouTube, wherever you are watching us from or listening to us from, God bless you and I ask that the Lord will do you good in Jesus' name. Amen. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting, 
I will praise Him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Oh, we will praise You from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will. Sister Hadiza, Hadiza, the one I met, where is she? Sister Hadiza, please come. Abras Copran de Lekiaba. Can I get a mic, Bishop, please? I just had in my spirit that we should take this testimony. Come stand. You are going to take our testimony, eh? I saw that um, two reasons. One, to build our faith, if, if, if it's going to please come here. For two reasons, I want us to take this good testimony. Number one, to build our faith so that we know that not only is God in this place, but God is in the business of changing people. Amen? And then number two, to prepare our hearts for what God will do tonight. Amen? You see, I, I don't want us to become familiar with the workings of God. I don't want us to become familiar with the things that God does. Beginning from your personal life to the things that God is doing with His people, with His people and in the body. Amen. Um, I, ho I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. Uh, please share the testimony you shared with them during the week, okay? Beginning from Sunday's encounter and then what happened during the week. Please, very quickly. Thank you. Okay. Praise the your Lord. Name and, tell them your name and then the testimony. Praise the Lord. Okay, my name is Hadisa Abubakar. Okay, I put, put last the mic Sunday, close to her mic, okay. mouth. Uh -huh. Last you. Sunday was my second day of visiting this ministry. So when I met with the apostle, he now prophesied. He asked me if I, because I didn't tell him anything about me. He asked if I work with an angel, and I said yes. He now prophesied that I was going to be promoted, and I said amen, and I key into it. And I think two days or three days after then, Tuesday, I was, right? Tuesday. Yeah. So that's two days after. Yes, and it came as a surprise. I was promoted, and they doubled my. That is so. What she wanted to say was the pay was doubled. And this is how you celebrate God. You see, I said you are becoming too used to miracles. Come, I'm not done with you. Come. In two days. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 6. It says after two days he will revive us. And on the third day he will raise us up. You meet somebody you have never met before. A word comes and in two days... And this is how you celebrate God. It tells me that you didn't, came for, you didn't come for a miracle today. Some of you are trusting God for promotion and you are celebrating God sitting down. Hallelujah. Now, there are other things come. There are other things I would have loved to ask her to say. I never met her before, I think. I've never met her before. Just and you know it's very difficult when they tell you they don't know what just pray, amen. But see, the Bible says it confirms the word of his servant. 
not because of the man when god has authorized the man to speak for him the anointing backs up that word wherever it goes this is not to glorify man this is to glorify the god of heaven that does wonders if you are here trusting god for that kind of miracle i declare that before the end of this service is coming your way yeah. two days two days i believe that god is here today some of you are going to see what i call a 24 hour miracle yeah. see we've seen it over and over in this place again and again. it's just that some of you don't like sharing your testimonies and I encourage you to do it because sharing your testimony is one of the ways by which we overcome the devil. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words. Any testimony you don't share, you have not vanquished the enemy on that issue. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you. We perfect these testimonies. Hold my hand. And in the name of Jesus, I rebuke death from your family. I rebuke death from your family. Amen. I declare that every cycle, every demonic cycle of rising and falling, of delay comes to an end now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with you. In Jesus' name. Please celebrate God for that. Take your seat. Joel chapter 2, verse 21 sound people please walk on this sound especially for the drums thank you let's look at the word briefly and then we'll pray I'll try my best that we maximize time today because there's so much that we will do so much that we will do Joel chapter 2 from verse 21 Blessed be the name of the Lord. He touched me. He touched me. And all the joys that flooded my soul. Something happened And now I know He touched me And made me own. He touched me Ambraka Sobrahada He touched me Oh, and oh, the joy that fills my soul. <laughs> oh, something happened, and now I know He touched me. And me something happened, and now I know he touched me and me. Is there a name like Stephanie? Stephanie either you are here or a family member or somebody connected to you Stephanie I want to just preach but this name is just coming right in front of me Stephanie if you get the person let me have that person I want to talk to that person or if it's connected to somebody Joel chapter 2 From verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Rejoice means shout, rejoice means clap. 
Rejoice means scream. So let me read it again so that you can respond the appropriate way. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. See. For the Lord has done marvelous things. Not that the Lord will do. The Lord has done. If you are not vocal, there is no way you are going to be close to a miracle. If your faith is not vocal, when you need to shout, you shout. When you need to scream. Was it not the shout of men that brought down the walls of Jericho? It says, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Go on, we are reading to 23. Do not be afraid, you beasts of the field. For the open pastures are springing up. And the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Verse 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Now, just hold it here. Later on, we'll read to verse 25, but just hold it here. Now, this book of Joel opens with a story. And the story was the calamity that had befallen God's people. If you start reading from chapter 1, it says that the locust invaded the land of Israel. The locust there was not just talking about physical locust, but it was using the analogy of locust to present the destructive picture of the enemy on the children of Israel. The locust there was actually the army of the enemy that had invaded the land of Israel. And the Bible says, God began to call them to weep and to mourn. In chapter 2, he began to call for a solemn assembly. That everybody, the priest, the bride and the bridegroom, would come out and weep before God. That he would spare his people. And then, I believe, in accordance to the cry and the prayer. You see, when God's people, prayer is very powerful. When the people of God lift up their voice to pray, it attracts the attention of heaven. The Bible says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. The greatest expression of humility is prayer. Only humble men pray. So, and sometimes God will be quiet on certain situations until you cry out to him. Not because he doesn't know what to do. But you see, there is a law of territory. Which is written in Psalms 1, 15 verse 16. It says, The heaven of heavens belong to God, but the earth has He given to the sons of men. On earth, man has supreme license. And for God to operate on earth, He needs that license from man. And that license is in form of prayer. is in form of supplication. And so the day that a man decides to humble himself and cry out to God as his only source of help, the Bible says, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It says, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will do what? Heal their land. Meaning that when God responds to the prayer of his people, even the land is affected. That's why I believe that if, Niger if the, the Nigerian church will pray, terrorism will come to an end. Let's not deceive ourselves. This thing is not, we are not fighting an external force. We are fighting ourselves. This is conspiracy in its highest order. Amen? Yes. So the Bible says, God called them to pray and to weep before God. And then as a result of that prayer, God began to prophesy through his prophets. Because one of the ways to stir up the prophetic is by prayer and intercession. And I've said this again and again and I will keep saying it. That the prophetic is God's agency for creation on the earth. If God will do anything on earth, he must follow the, the agency of the prophetic. There is nothing that God will do that he won't say. The Bible says the former things have come to pass and the new things do, do, you know, do, do I declare. And before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. So that the people of God are not surprised when it happens. And so that they can understand their own part to play for the fulfillment of that word. So God began to speak through the prophet Joel. 
And from verse 21 where we read, God began to give them good news, to be glad and rejoice. Notice the way God speaks. God did not say, for the Lord will do, because it had not been done yet. He says, for the Lord has done. Because before God, there is nothing like past tense or present tense. Before God, there is nothing like the future or the past. Men dwell in time. Spirits dwell in eternity. Because eternity is time without end. But God dwells in light. The Bible says, In whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. Light means, as he says it, it happens. In other words, God dwells in a realm called now. That means, as God says it to you, it is as good as done. So God will not look at your situation before he begins to speak. Sympathy is not a fruit of the Spirit. Do you understand what I said? Many people want God to sympathize with them. Just like the man by the pool of Bethsaida. When Jesus came to him. The Bible says Jesus asked him a simple question. Just like God is asking some of you in your heart tonight. Some of you are so bothered about other things you left coming here. That you cannot focus on God to meet your expectation. Jesus asked him a simple question. Do you want to get well? And then the man went into research. He told Jesus, he said, I've been here for 38 years. I know the color of the cloth that the angel that comes to stir this water wears. I know how and when he comes. I know how the water moves. But you see, the problem is I don't have anybody to put me in the... Who asked him that question? Just like when you want to pray for some people, they begin to tell you this and that and this and that. Let me tell you something about the word of God. Please, reduce movement. Let me tell you something about the word of God. The word of God is like a drug. I can just send a text message to you and say it is well. That it is well was not just a text message. You read it as a written word. But the anointing that backed up the one who said it has followed that word. And when the anointing backs up a written word, it becomes a sent word. It, it's like a drug that you take. You don't tell the drug. You can swallow a Panadol for headache. When you are ingesting it, it's going the wrong way. But just give it a little while. It will find its way. There's something they call, is it neurological pathway or something? Those who, how many of us are in the medical field here? Yeah. When you get to heaven, study medicine. You say, wonderful. Find yourself in the medical field. You say, Amen. All of these arts and humanity, you don't need all those things when you get to heaven. Isn't it? We do respect to people from that category. But you will not need those things there. Because God is there. He's omniscience. Amen. So that word, it is where, means family issues solved. Means health issues solved at the same time. Means business that is dying jacks back to life. Means problem at your place of work. God is fixing it. That word, when it goes into your life, it looks for every part of your life that doesn't look like God. And it adjusts it to look like the Christ. You see, but the, the problem has always been the problem of faith. That we believe that when God sends his word, the Bible says he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them. After healing the ailment, he discovered that there was a spiritual force behind that predicament. And he broke, the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron asunder. And that's how God acts. So God began to speak through the prophet. Please give me that verse 23 again. God told them to rejoice because he will do great things. And the pastures were going to spring forth again. Verse 23. Then this is the prophecy for God's people. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully. And he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Hold on. You need a little... You need to study beyond the original text to understand what he was saying. He says he will send the former rain and the latter rain. First of all, he says he will cause the rain. What is that, the rain? The rain is the former and the latter rain. 
that will come in the first month. Some translations will say in the same month. Now in Israel, the early rains that come is what, you know, it, it, that's what connotes to farmers that it's time to begin the planting season. So as soon as rain comes after the, a long dry season, they go to the farms and they begin to cultivate. They begin to plow the ground, getting ready to sow. And then they will have to wait for another four or five months again before the latter rain will come. The latter rain is the rain that comes to soften the ground and get it ready for harvest. Because Israel is a land around the Middle East and the drought there is very intense. So, the former and the latter rain speaks about two seasons. Please understand, listen to me. Some of you, this is where your miracle is this night. The former and the latter rain speaks of two seasons. Now, God is saying, instead of you to wait for one season to come for you to plant, because the, 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 the universal law on earth is the law of seed time and harvest. Everything that must happen is as a reaction to something that has happened. There's something called the law of cause and effect. Meaning that nothing just happens in your life like that. There is something that provokes that thing that happens. So everything is a reaction to something. Meaning if you want to eat yam, what should you do? Plant yam. If you need money, what do you do? Sow, not pray. Do you understand? Don't worry, I won't talk too much on giving. Because I know some of you, anytime they talk about giving, something begins to shake in your body. Once they talk about giving and you, be, you, you, you are not okay, I tell you there's a demon spirit involved. I didn't say you are possessed, I just said there's a demon spirit. So, God kept that law to control everything that happens on earth. Watch this. And then, He says, seed time and harvest. Notice He didn't say harvest time. He said seed time meaning that your seed would determine your harvest when you plant a seed a seed of words a seed of actions a seed of whatever it is you have uh, you will allow nature to take its cause acting on your seed and then bring about a harvest for you so if you need revival in your city what do you do sow the seed of revival which is prayer and intercession and that's one of the identity of this ministry we are a praying ministry. Amen? Uh -huh. Don't worry. When we start the series of war on warfare, when you come here, you think we are second mountain of fire. Amen? I pr those prayers, you know those prayers. I pray them well. Oh. Forget this fine face you see. I pray those prayers well. And I've seen results. Amen? The Bible says, He will cause to come upon you the former and the latter. Meaning God is saying, instead of you waiting, because because of the invasion of the enemy the enemy has stolen everything from the land of god's people there was impoverishment there was poverty there was pain there was peril they had lost everything this economy had gone beyond depression you know what they call it recession to depression so they had nothing and they needed god to act fast so so god says well I have a technology in my kingdom I can compress time so whatever you have lost you don't need the time you lost you lose those things to recover those things again it's called restoration and God said this is how I'll do it he said I will cause two seasons to come together for you at once in other words as you sow you reap meaning that there's going to be a double grace and he calls it the rain because it's the rain that connotes planting and connotes harvest so God that for me to restore to you a thing that you have lost in vision I collapse because the real thing that you lost was time it was your cross it was not money the real thing you lost was time. everything I said it last miracle service everything that Satan steals from a man it is to the intent that the time of that man is affected Satan can make a man chase after the wrong calling for 10 years and you think that's your calling Blinded by visions that are blown. By the time you realize this is not where God has called you to. Before you turn back and go back to where God wanted you to start from. Ten years have gone. I believe that's one of the reasons why Apostle Paul had so much grace invested on him. Because historians 
tell us that Paul began his ministry around 50. Imagine that. I believe that's the reason why God gave him so much grace. And even when they started the ministry, he didn't start preaching immediately. The Bible says God took him to the wilderness of Arabia. First time for three years. Another time for 18 years. You have already started late. Why delay by going back to wait upon God? The reason is because waiting upon God is the strategy for speed. You are not wasting time when you wait upon God. <laughs> no, you are not. Don't bother about the pressure of people are coming, start now, do this, whether it's a ministry or a business. No, the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew. God wants to give you capacity so that the things that caused the people that went on the same pathway with you to fail, God is going to give you wings to fly above them. He says, I will cause the former and the latter rain. I will collapse two seasons. But that's the first level of this scripture. The second level is that the original translation of the word, the former reigned faithfully. In the original Hebrew that it is written, it means teacher of righteousness. It means teacher of righteousness. So if we, ex if, if, if we exchange every word for reign there, for teacher, we are talking, of course, teacher means someone who teaches. Who speaks for word who declares doctrine isn't it and in this case sent by God so God is telling them I will send to you a teacher of righteousness in other words I will send to you a prophetic voice because the Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 10 and 11 it say as the rain cometh down from heaven and does not return void till it waters the earth to bring forth seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He says, so shall my word be. Meaning that the word of God is likened to rain. The effect that rain will bring to, 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 to bring about a season of harvest is the same way my word is in its operation. So when I speak to you and I tell you get up and move, it's like rain that has come to tell you it's time for harvest. Oh, somebody's not catching me today. Deuteronomy 32 verse 2 It says don't go there It says let my speech Pour forth as rain Meaning that the word, the word Rain there was talking about God when he sends his word Either through his servant Or when he speaks directly So when the Bible says I will send forth my rain Go back to Joel When he says he has caused to come upon you the rain What he's saying is that your last breakthrough came because a prophetic word was issued to you. That was the former rain. It says, but now I will send to you the former and the latter. Meaning that I'm about to send my word to you to bring the breakthrough that you lost and the breakthrough that you should have now. And I'm combining it for you to receive it at once. Amen. Oh, come on. If you, if you believe it, you say, I better amen. Amen. Yeah. This is humanly impossible. And this is where God specializes. He will send for the rain. The former and the latter. In the same month. So God can take your miracles for January. That is already passed. And you felt you didn't receive it. And then still go down to the end of the year. And gather what is there. And bring it to you in the month of March. So that by the end of this month, you need to write a new list of prayer requests. Somebody didn't hear me. I, 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 I wish I have people here. Let me prophesy to you. Some of you, before the end of the first quarter of this year, you will have to visit your prayer points and rewrite new ones because God would have answered everything. I say by the God that answers prayer, God would have answered everything in the month of March. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Take your seat. This is not scam. This is real. God specializes in it. And this, my beloved brothers and sisters, is the technology God of heaven and the God of earth. Amos chapter 9 verse 13. I, I want you to give me this scripture in four translations. 
If you have CEV, give me CEV. If you have Good News Translation, give me Good News Translation next. Then Message Translation. CEV, Good News Translation, Message. Let's see the one that comes first. Amos 9.13 I want to show you something. <laughs> and it's my prayer that this becomes the testimony of somebody here. Amen. Watch this. Good news translation. He said, the days are coming, says the Lord, when grain will grow faster than it can be harvested. Hey, kabaros katahaya. He said, and grapes will grow faster than the wine can be made. The mountains will drip with sweet wine and the hills will flow with it. Give me CEV, contemporary English version. If you have CEV, then after CEV, we'll, we'll give, you give me a message. If you don't have CEV, just give me the message. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. <laughs> you know, that's what they call swimming glory. You remember Ezekiel? When the breakthroughs so collide with you that you, 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 are, you are trying to get your breath from this, from this testimony, another one is coming. You are trying to breathe from this one, another one is coming. How that God can bring five breakthroughs in one month. And you'll be ashamed to share the testimony because people will believe it's too good to be true. It's not scam. God can do it. And God is about to do it for somebody this night. Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings, blessings, like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. I dare somebody to give God a 10 second shout of praise. He said, everywhere you look, blessing, blessing. That's the song they sang in the last miracle service. I see it. I feel it. Testimonies are everywhere around. Come on, one more time. I see it. I feel it. Come on, say testimonies everywhere around. I'm in the middle of it. I'm in the middle. It's happening now, it's happening now. Come on, testimonies are everywhere. Testimonies are everywhere around. Sit down, God bless you. I will soon round up. It says every year. See, some of you, some of you have been so burdened with problems. Bring it down. Some of you. You, 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 you barely have a track record of the miracle working power of God. So it becomes difficult for you to believe that this is real and God can do it. Must God bless you because you deserve it? Sometimes when a child makes you happy, what you do is to give them a tip, isn't it? Give them what they don't want. Now the Bible says, if you who are evil men know how to give good things to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father not give good things? Good things mean a miracle job. Good things mean miracle babies. Not baby, babies. Huh? So when you have waited for 10 years, God gives you triplets at once. Then the next issue is twins. Then you have to come for us to close the womb. Because even if you do what they call what they call that thing, what family planning. You can't pl you can't plan the spirit out of <laughs> name it. Good thing can be anything. It can be a promotion you don't deserve. Is it every time you deserve something for it to come to you? No. Otherwise, where's the work of favor? The Bible says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Jonathan. Put your name there. For that time, 
for his time of favor. Yea, his set time has come. It takes God nothing to bless you, not because you ask. But the Bible says, if he did not spare his son, but gave him for our sake, how much more shall he not with him freely give us all things? All things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he says, all things are yours. All things. And this night, I came to do just one thing. To build your faith to receive the mega dimension of the anointing that is coming to you because you see listen if you cannot believe it you cannot see it and if you don't see it it cannot happen around you you have to believe it you have to conceive it first of all remember our teachings on faith you can get it you can get the sermons the last two ah I can't share this testimony because the person is listening online from another state. If I share it, some of you, you will jump and leave this hall. I won't share it because I know he's listening from another state now. Get those messages and lift, listen to them. I'm telling you, not only will they build your, your faith, but it will create an atmosphere of miracles. You have to believe it. Believing starts from a conception. Remember, I taught you about faith. I said that faith starts from a knowledge. That knowledge produces a vision. A knowledge about what God can do. A knowledge about God's power, about the integrity of God's word. And that knowledge begins to produce a vision in your mind. That in the midst of this current situation, based on this knowledge of what God can do or has done, I can see that this is what he will do for me. He told Abraham, he said, lift up your eyes and see. As far as your eyes can see. So you must be able to conceive a picture in your mind. That God can do what he says he will do. That God can turn this situation around. That God can give you a miracle job that you didn't apply for. That God can visit your family and bring peace. That God can choose to leave five people in your family in one month. It happened with Abraham. Genesis 21. While he was celebrating that Sarah had given birth, the Bible says news came to him that his brother's wife has also given birth. Who was barren? That's why I said the problem of barrenness was not with Sarah. It was a spirit that was in Abraham's lineage. But it affected the woman. Just like some of you, you get married into a family and strange things begin to happen to you. And because of how society is, very genderistic most times the women become the ones that receive the blame it's not true there are certain demonic spirits at work in a family that the way they manifest or they operate is that is the people that associate with that family that will have the ripple effect are we together so you you must see it you must conceive it in your mind as I'm speaking to you right now I'm building your faith you must begin to take your eyes off that situation or that problem some of you you will not even believe that some people came for the meeting to see others blessed but they just believe this is not their service may it not be so for you Amen. you have to see it you have to see that this is the day God will address that 10 year situation this is the day that God will address that 5 year situation you have to begin to see the hand of God coming in and changing things. And then it is in that conception that you, your faith builds up. Your conviction rises. And then you begin to boldly declare. The Bible says we have the same spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13 It says, as it is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. It said, knowing this, that he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead shall also raise us up. It starts in your conception. What do you see about your ministry? What do you see about your health? Some of you came here Every other part of your life is going on smooth, but you keep struggling with your health. There is no moon that you don't go for treatment. 
There is no kind of treatment you have not received. What do you see about your marriage in crisis? What do you see about your, your business dilapidated? You know, after they shut down cryptocurrency, I'm sure some people hang themselves. After they, they banned cryptocurrency, some people became frustrated because they had invested all their life inside. God is the only surest investment, I tell you. I'm not saying don't invest, invest. But do it on the strength that whatever happens, you have a sure banker, and that banker is God. Every, you can lose everything in life, but don't lose God. And don't lose your faith in Him. That faith is capable of translating everything that left. Just the way it vanished is the same way it can reappear again. It takes God nothing, I tell you. It takes God nothing. My life, I've seen over and over again, God do strange miracles that even me, I know I didn't pray for this one. Just the way God will do so for somebody today. Amen. So you have to believe it. You have to see it. You have to look beyond the circumstance. Look beyond the limitation of the man of God. And see the God of all possibilities. Stepping into that situation and bringing an utter end. It doesn't matter how late or early. Let me tell you, there's nothing like late or early before God. When God arrives, is the right time. God can choose to arrive when everybody thinks he's late. And then because of you, the procedure will start again. You remember the story about the man of God I told you? In the military, wrote an exam. And then they whispered to all of them, say all of you failed the exam. It was a promotion exam. And then everybody was shaking. But he understood the law of faith and he went to the book, the bush. And he kept saying, Jonathan, pass. Jonathan, pass. Jonathan, pass. He said it till his mind believed it. Till his mind could conceive a picture of him coming out triumphantly from that exam. Even though the current reality was that he had failed. And then it looked like nothing had happened. Days later, the instructor came and said, Gentlemen, your results are out. And all of you performed so bad so much so that everybody failed and because of that the board has sat down and decided to reduce the cut of mark so that some people can pass and when they reduce the cut of mark guess who was number one yours truly does that look like the hand of God yes it does some of you are surrounded by situations some even families and relationships that over time has vocalized all manner of doubt and unbelief. There are some of us here, we pray in tongues, no problem. But when it comes to believing God, it's almost impossible. God can move for any other person but me. No, that's, that's our state. Some of us, that's, that's, that's our state. I can tell by your, your reaction in this service. I can tell by your posture in this service. Because when a man is expecting something and he knows it will come, he can barely sit on his seat sometimes. And the Bible says, surely there is an end. And thy expectation, Proverbs 23, 18, shall not be cut short. So how does God command restoration and then we'll pray? He commands it through the... There are many ways by which restoration can happen. But the one way I'm concerned about this night with us and then we'll pray is by the prophetic. In fact, this is the highest medium by which God releases the mystery of restoration in the life of his people. By the prophetic. Second Kings chapter 7, chapter 6 rather, there was a famine in Israel. And the Bible says that the king, people started eating their babies. And the king came to kill Elisha because he felt the prophet was responsible. And I think I agree with the king. Anytime there's a problem in a territory, check. Maybe the prophets are not speaking. And when I say prophets, <laughs> there are, you, you can be called a prophet and to that territory you were not sent. I hope you understand. Huh? Because there were many, there were 7,000 other prophets in the days of Elijah. Yet God was using only one person. 
So prophet there does not just mean only those that are called into the prophetic office. Prophet means when a man has interacted with God to a point where on the strength of his intimacy, God has invested on him the progress, the prosperity, and the livelihood of a nation, of a territory, of a city, of a people, of a generation. And on the strength of his words, speaking by divine authority, God can command his orchestrations. And I tell you this, I tell you the truth, I tell you this before God. I say it with all humility. I may not be called a prophet, but to this territory, I'm a prophet. I say it with all humility. Whether you believe or not. It's not I'm not called to the office of a prophet, but to this territory, I am. And the king came to Elisha. And Elisha gave him a very shocking expression. Immediately Elisha told him, he said, okay, by this time tomorrow, a measure of wheat will be sold for a barley. Or a, a, a barley of wheat will be sold for a shekel. And a measure of barley will be sold for half a shekel. And the Bible says, according to the word of the Lord. While the prophet was speaking in a room, the spirit of prophecy hovered around that territory and was acting on four lepers to ensure that that word was fulfilled. Because when a word comes out of the mouth of God or out of the mouth of his choice servant, there is a spiritual agency from heaven that backs up that word so that it is fulfilled in its time. And you know the story. The Bible says it happened as, as the prophet has said it. And the man who doubted God and said, even if God opens the windows of heaven, that man was a fool. Because the last time God opened the windows of heaven, rain fell and covered the whole earth. Speaking of abundance, right? Read the flood. Genesis chapter 8. The man said, I'm sure that man doesn't even know history. He said, even if God opens the windows of heaven. Meanwhile, he didn't read scripture. That the last time the windows of heaven opened and there was flood, they had to wait for months before they could come out of the ark. And Elisha told him, you will see with your eyes and you will not eat. I pray that that will not be somebody's situation here. Yeah. May you not see other people catch their miracle and go. And you come back next week and you are the same. No way. He does it by the prophetic. The Bible says in Isaiah 44 verse 26. That he confirms the word of his servant. And perfect the counsel of his messenger. I know there and there there has been a lot of controversy about the prophetic. I know a lot of believers have been duped, have been manipulated. I know we have seen um, the fake. We have seen fraud stars. But it doesn't depict the fact that the prophetic is real. That there are those whose ears are on the heartbeat of God. And when they speak, it's as God has spoken. That confirms the word of his servant. And perfect the counsel of his men. Why didn't God just speak to the dry bones from heaven? After all, he was speaking and Ezekiel could hear him. The word of the Lord from the mount of God did nothing to the dry bones. The word of the Lord from the mount of the prophet changed the situation. Why? Because the earth has it given to the sons of men. Like it or not, if you must experience a divine transitioning from one season of glory to another, there must be a human representative that must speak for God. Like it or not. I thank God for your secret place. I thank God for your prayer life. But when it comes to this principle, it is unbendable. There must be a human voice. Even me, I have my prophet. I tell you. You can come and tell me all kinds of dreams. People have dreamt so much about me. People have seen all kinds of... In the last two years, people have dreamt up to, up to three times that I died. See me. I'm still here. So when I receive those words, I don't, I don't shake. Thank you. I just go back to God and then I look for my prophet. That confirms the word of his servant. The person may have his own limitations. But God has authorized him as a mouthpiece. All the prophets in scripture died. Didn't they? They died. In fact, Elisha who God used many times to perform miracles died of a disease. But even his dead dry bones 
who raised a man that was dead back to life. That's how God operates. When God looks for a man that is aligned to him, and God invests upon that man, the economy of a nation, that nation becomes, the progress of that nation is at the detriment of the word that comes out of his mouth. So if I were you, if I have such a person, do whatever you can do to ensure that he speaks the right thing. There was a man of God that had a disagreement with Archbishop Benson that was years ago. And I don't know whether it, Archbishop was right or wrong, but he told the man, go back to your country and suffer. And the man went back thinking that was just a sentence that was made. And after two years, grass was growing in the concrete floor of his church. This concrete, grass was growing. You know, when grass grows out of concrete floor, it means they've not stood on that place for long. And somebody advised the man, say, why, why do you want to die in this? Go back and, and apologize to the archbishop. He went back, apologized to Archbishop Bensi Dawson, and Archbishop Bensi Dawson said, go back and prosper. And today, that, that man is a notable voice as far as the Pentecostal circle of Africa is concerned. If I call the name, you know. That was the same man that spoke of Bassinger back into democracy rule. The same man that received cause and blessing. That's how God operates. God will not do anything outside of the spoken word. And the Bible says it is we that gives voice to his word. So if God speaks, he needs a human representation to give utterance and voice to what he has said. So that what he has said can find expression on that individual or in the landscape or the atmosphere of that territory. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that the earth was without form and was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit moved upon the face of the water. Everything was wrong. The spirit of God had already moved. But despite the fact that the spirit of God had moved, there had to be the operation of the prophetic. And God came and spoke. And everything that happened from verse 3 down to the end of that chapter, many theologians believe that there was no creation in chapter 1 of Genesis. Many theologians believe all you have there is restoration. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 11, that through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Even God knew the power of spoken words. Restoration. In Isaiah 61, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to do what? To preach. You see the place of speaking again. Good tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of them that are bound in prison, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The word year of the Lord means the year of the Lord's release or the year of the Lord's favor. How do you enter into it? By a proclamation. And the, and the acceptable year of our God. He said to comfort those that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. And then he goes down. Began to list many things there. That will happen to the people of God when they are restored. And in verse 7. He ends like this. He says. And for your shame you will have double. Somebody say double. double. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm going with this night. Double. For your shame, you will have double. That's why I know that whatever opportunity you lost in the past, you didn't lose. It only went into your future to wait for you. And the fact that it has gone to your future to wait for you is, is that you have made an investment that will bring back a double profit for your return. Yeah. In the kingdom, we gain to lose and we lose to gain. So anytime it feels like you have lost something, no, 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 no. That was just a strategy for you to gain that thing in a multiple version. <laughs> Some of you don't know. That was the reason why Ishmael had to go for Isaac to stay. Because Isaac was the one who opened the door for other children to come. Double. Double. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 31. 
It says, when a thief is caught, he will restore how many times? Sevenfold. So just in case you are not comfortable with double restoration, God has bigger packages. You know there's promo package, there's jumbo package, there's anyone you want. Depending on your situation. In case double doesn't suit you. Maybe double will not make up for what you have lost. God said there's something called sevenfold. He said yet when he's found, speaking of the devil, because he came to steal, kill and destroy. He said he must restore how many times? Sevenfold. So much that he may have to give up all the substance. That means God can evacuate the enemy's account to restore you. And I told you before that there are demonic banks and satanic warehouses. Yes. The Bible says in Isaiah 45, from verse 2, I will open him to him the two leaf gates. He said, I will go before him and, and make the crooked path straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. In verse 3, he says, I will give unto him treasures of darkness. What's the meaning of that? That everything that Satan steals from you, there's a place he hides it. Things don't get missing in the spirit realm. No, sir. No. Remember that this realm is a product of that realm. This material existence is a product of that immaterial reality. Anything that you call missing here, go back to that place and check for it. And that was what God did when he was restoring the world that he created that was without form and void. Sevenfold. Sevenfold. So you have not gotten a job since you graduated and it's getting to four or five years. Or you have been managing a small job. Is it possible that God will restore me again? I've submitted CV everywhere. In fact, the gate men of those pl places, they know me. The moment they come, they'll start gisting with you. Say, no, just bring a don't, don't worry if they will. You know that kind of thing. God, I've been managing 30,000 for three years now. When will my own change come? God, you see my heart and what I want to do for the kingdom. But I'm limited because of finance. The Bible says he will restore sevenfold. How that you finish this meeting, a call comes to you from a place where you didn't even advertise your CV. Without interview, they give you a job. And the starting salary is 700,000. So that when you are supposed to resume, you will not even go because you think it's, it's not true. You know that kind of miracle. I remember one of our sisters, I don't know if she's here. Her contract got finished last year, I think somewhere around March or April or so. And she stayed without a job throughout that year. And early this year, she was on the process with, with a company. And then after formalizing everything, they said, we'll get back to you. And we'll be, get back to you was the job was almost going away from her like the others have done and she sent me a text and told me this is how they did the last time now they want to do it again i said don't worry the lord favored you and favor you that was early hours of a thursday morning by thursday evening that day i met her and i said how far she said they called me and they say i should resume when i want to resume favor sir is true and is my name I don't know about you, but it's my name. Yes. Restore. Restore. There are marriages God must restore. There are families God must restore. I know that you love God, but sometimes you need the miracle working power of God to put at bay certain situations that tend to mock the name of God in your life. Don't you know that the reason why Satan wants to deny you of that breakthrough is because when it comes, it is to the end that God will be glorified. Because when men and friends around you hear what God has done, the Bible says men will see your good works and glorify. That's the part Satan doesn't like. So he will keep it at bay. He will do everything to delay it. And I'm convinced that most times a, a believer needs restoration. It is because there is a delay at work even in ministry the bible says in second kings chapter 8 the shunammite woman that elisha had dealings with elisha gave her by a prophetic word he said there's going to be farmer in this city leave and go to another city 
She left for seven years that the famine lasted. And the Bible says when the famine was over, she went back to the king of a nation to ask back her land. At least let me just recover my land so that I can come and start again. There's nothing like start again in the, in the, in the place of God. I have come to discover that God is not interested in you starting all over. No. You can start afresh, but you must not start all over. Your starting can be somebody's dream conclusion. You didn't hear what I said. At least let me start all over if I have my land. The Bible says she got in just when Gehazi. Now, Gehazi was already a leper by this time. And there was no way a leper would be within the confines of a city, much less within the presence of a king. There were three sets of people God anointed in the olden days in, in Israel. A king, a priest, and a prophet. And part of the instruction was that if you were anointed by God, you were not supposed to come near anything that was unclean, including a leper. But you see, when God wants to interrupt situations to favor you, He can make your enemies be at peace for a season. Just to favor you. Then after favoring you, they, they, they split again. The Bible says, Gehazi was telling the king the miracles Elisha had done. And then, just when he was talking about the woman's son that Elisha raised up, ah, I prophesied to somebody that the people that will favor you, wherever they are, your destiny helpers, as you are approaching them, may there be discussions about you. Yeah. Discussions that will force them to favor you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. him up. Just when she came in, that was when they were discussing her matter. Just like when you enter your boss office on Monday morning, that's when he's discussing your matter with somebody. And they, they are discussing how they will hand over this project to you. Meanwhile, you are just an officer. And then when they tell you, can you do this, can you do that, and you answer, you didn't know that that was the interview for a new job. Or somebody is discussing with you and say, if you have one million, what can you do? I will do this, I will do this. You don't know that the one million is already there waiting for you. And the Bible says when the king heard that she was the one, the king turned to his officer and he said, restore her lands to her and give her, not only her lands, all the produce of that land for the seven years. Hold on. There was famine for seven years. So there was no agricultural uh, uh, um, cycle that went on. It was assumed that nobody planted or harvested. The king said, that's not my business. This one, I've chosen to favor her. You see, when God decides to restore you, eh, it will be like magic that people will start envying you. That's why, listen, I told you one time, I said, you will know your friends when a particular breakthrough comes to you. And this year is one of those years. Some of you think the people around you are your friends. Wait, when a strange anointing comes upon you and God distinguishes you, that's why you know your friends and your enemies. Mm. Because they will begin to question, ah, me too. Ah. Some of them will feel like the breakthrough was meant for them, not you. Somebody went to buy a car. They say it's, it's, a, it's a Nissan Pathfinder. A Pathfinder, right? An Igbo man went to buy the car. I heard this joke many years ago. And he said he bought, a car. he bought the car and he was telling somebody that this is my car. Pathfinder. And the man said, no, it's not Pathfinder. It's Pathfinder. He said, this is the name of my car, Pathfinder. The man said, no, it's not Pathfinder. It's Pathfinder. And the guy was trying to correct him. At some point, the Uber man said, well, you have the name. I have the car. <laughs> and I said this to your haters. Let them have the gist. You have the miracle. <laughs> Let them do the talk for you. You do the enjoyment. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our lips with joy. 
Okay, said even the heathen among them, the Lord has done great things for them. He said, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. He said, turn again our captivity, like the streams of the south. He said, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth, weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless return, rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with him. Doesn't matter how that situation looks like. I came to present to you a God, a God that is able to do exceeding abundantly. Listen, as I'm talking right now, the Holy Spirit just asked me to say this. As I'm speaking right now, some of you, your miracle is already in a process. I'm telling you. Before even the prayers, as I'm talking right now, this is the word that will creatively form your miracle waiting for you after this meeting. Are we ready to pray tonight? How many of you are ready for God to visit you? Open your mouth and cry to Him. Kala brando sopra hatala bera baha subiata. Jedeke proda hazi alama. Jambra skapra Open your mouth and cry to Him. Lord, I believe. I believe. Visit me. I believe. Change my situation. I believe. Turn again my captivity. I believe. Do what men have written off. What only you can do. Maraka sopranda la prateke barahadia. E bon zaprahala la caprande che presso toboro de be. E barada bassia capara da bacosia. Sound from the heavens, sound to creation, the glory is here. I release the sound from the throne room, sound to your business, your glory is here. I release tonight the sound from the heavens. A sound to your finances, your glory has come. You will never be the same. You touched His grace, your life must change. You will never be the same. You touched His grace, your life must change. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and then I'll begin to minister. Prayer point number one, there are people here that the enemy has invaded your life or your family 
and has stolen certain things that it looks like those things may never return back it may be an opportunity it may be a marriage it may be finances there are people here that the enemy has stolen certain things and has kept it at bay I want you to lift up your voice and ask the Lord for restoration this night mention those things don't be afraid mention those things there is no mountain that can remove my finances restored. My Hallelujah. 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 Last prayer. Listen, please. Listen. Listen. Last prayer. And I want us to pray. Listen. Some of you, this is why you came. There is this bondage or yoke of stagnation or delay that is upon the life of some of us here. You love God genuinely from the depths of your heart but there is this one area that seems to be delayed god must have answered you in every other area but this one it seems you have waited too long i don't know what it is and i don't care to know what it is but this is the night where god is breaking the yoke of delay this is the night where god is going to give supernatural speed Open your mouth and say, Lord, bring an end to delay. Bring an end to stagnation. Bring an end to delay. Over this situation. Bring an end, bring an end. Break the yoke of delay. Break the yoke of stagnation. He said, the Lord shall make my feet as the feet of a deer. And set me upon my high places. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he gathered his loins. And overtook the chariots of Ahab. 
Pray, come on, pray. Hallelujah. 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 Can we lift our hands? As much as you can, please try to be still wherever you are. Just the cymbals and the keyboard. I didn't intend to start on this note, but this is where God begins this night. There are yokes that will be broken from people's lives. Some of you don't even know that there is a demonic bondage or yoke on your life or your family represented but as the power of God moves through this hall now every captivity will be exposed and the chains will be broken please eyes closed just lift your hands Imarama Imarama hey. Imarama You are seated on the throne Don't sing, just let me sing Imarama You are seated on the throne Imarama Imarama Hey Imarama You are seated on the throne Imarama You are seated on the throne Unto Him Same progression Unto him who sits upon the white horse, same progression. Unto him who sits upon the white horse, unto him who sits upon the throne. Unto him who sits upon the throne. I'm going to count to seven. The power of God will move through this hall now. It's going to be a very quick walk. God is showing me, and this is where God wants to start. 
I'm seeing chains like silver color. Some of them looking very new, very heavy chains on the hands of people, some on the legs of people. Father, if what you are showing me is true, if what I've declared is what you are showing me now, back up this word by the release of your power. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, every kind of yoke, every kind of oppression, every chain that is visible here, upon every life or any family, at the count of seven, let your power break those chains now. Let your power break those chains now. Let your power break those chains now. Release destinies. Release families. Release your people now. In the name of Jesus. At the seventh count, I want you to shout Jesus. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Shout Jesus. Break those chains now. Arokete bene ke brasa kapaya. Mam broskete le brende ki baragai. Je prense ke boria kata. Let those chains break now. Let those chains break now. Let those chains break now. Now, now, now. Now, now, now. Ushers, please help them. Forever and ever and ever you reign. Forever and ever you reign. Forever and ever. Put your hands down. This row, this place. Lift your hands. Forever and ever you reign. Forever and ever and ever you reign. Forever and ever you reign. I want to pray against delay and stagnation just for these people here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards your people all over this center row. Anyone that has help him, ushers be sensitive, please. And please, if the ushers cannot get to you quick, help your neighbor. Anyone that has demonic programming of delay or stagnation over their lives, Father, at the count of three, let that programming be aborted now. I ask that you release destinies now. My God, I see the power of God. On this center row, from the front to the back. One. Two. Three. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. From the front to the back. From the front to the back. I have bought every program of delay. Every chain of stagnation is as though you are making progress, but you come back to the same place where you were or where you started from. It comes to an end now. Break, 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 break. Ala cabras caparanda caprandi que sopradia. The four of you. Sir, the, all of you, sirs, yes, the four of you, from you to you, hold hands together, please. I'm sorry because of the pandemic and all of that, just the four of you, okay? Hold your hands together. Did you come together?
three of you came together hold your hands together God wants to release something to the three of you are you ready close your hand your eyes lift your hands father in the name of Jesus a fresh anointing comes upon them right now number one number two number three number four that's it take it now take it now help that one take it now take it now like fire in your bones like fire in your bones like fire in your bones if you can't just pray in other tongues if you can't wherever you are just pray in the spirit I don't do this every service but I'm going to walk around there are people that God wants me to minister to I'm going to walk around father a touch that brings about see a touch that brings about a shift and a change let it come upon your people eyes closed everywhere make sure you are praying everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen must be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen must be returned unto you young lady hold my hand my dear hold my hand come stand here hold my hand with your two hands hold my hand with your two hands father new season let it be released on her right now the old is gone the new have come let the pains of yesterday be replaced with the joys of today let the pains of yesterday be replaced with the joys of today Abrando sabrahate la bagabaria Hey I see your joy coming I see your breakthrough coming I see your joy coming Who is Monica? Monica Monica Or who is connected to that name? Monica Father Let it be so New season New season New season New season that you will begin to count the joys because the pains of yesterday are replaced with the joys of today the pains of yesterday are replaced with the joys of today let it be so in the name of Jesus Father fresh oil fresh oil Fresh oil, fresh oil. May the Lord revisit your secret place and anoint you afresh in the name of Jesus. Monica, Monica, who is connected to that name? While I walk to the back, I just heard the name Monica. Who is connected to that name? Please save time. If you are here, you are connected to that name, please come.
I'm going to pray for the sick shortly and today God told me to lay hands on, on everyone that is sick. Now, this is what will happen. Listen. Listen. I'm going to pray for the sick when God instructs me. And it will be in two folds. First of all, I will call out those who are sick and I'll lay my hands on them and pray. And I'll need you to check them. As soon as I pray for them, I need you to check them. If there is a testimony, you let me know. Then, when I give you the go ahead, those of you that have family members that are sick, or friends or loved ones that are connected to you and are not here, if you can, take your phone and call them. I will let you know when I'm about to pray. You take your phone, call them. I pray you have enough credit. So you put it running. I'm going to pray through the phone. God told me that there will be more miracles on the airwaves today than physically here. Are we together? So at the right time, I'll let us know and then we'll go for it snappy. Amen? Monica. Who is Monica amongst you people? Who is Monica? Okay, all of you are related to Monica. Wait, I'll look for the person. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain Break every chain Break every chain This Monica I'm looking for Has another name With A and N Has another name with two letters I'm seeing A and N You sir Yeah, yeah. what's her name The second name is Awa our yes it's in chibok okay that's to say there's an a and an n in the yes. name yes sir okay she's the one i'm looking for we'll pray ma, ma, ma come i'll pray for you you came out for monica but god says i should pray for you huh so i'll pray for monica and i'll pray for you you need restoration ma she came she came with you ma you need restoration you see you need restoration and i'm seeing three things i'll pray for you one of it is finance. There's something that was lost that God wants to bring back. And when it happens, it will look too good to be true. Amen. I'll pray for you. There's an A and an N. Where is she? I think she should be in the campus now. Okay, she's on campus right now. Yes, sir. All right. I'll pray for her. I see God bringing joy her way. And I see God visiting her family. And as I'm talking about divine visitation on our family, I see God uprooting the menace of witchcraft. Amen. That's what I'm seeing. Yes, sir. I see a hand in the spirit going into the ground and uprooting stuff. Amen. Witchcraft a lot around where the family is domiciled. I see God breaking it. That's what I see, I'm seeing. Yes, sir. We'll pray and agree together. Okay, all of you came for Monica. Okay, yeah, I know, your, I know your sister, Monica. I'll just pray generally for all of you. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every... Who is Paul? Dark. Huh? Eh? Paul. The Paul I'm looking for is dark in complexion. Paul. The Paul I'm looking for, whether he's here or he's connected to you, is dark in complexion. That's the person God showed me this afternoon when I was praying. Paul. Sir, please find out. So that we don't come out at random. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Please, my call. Are you a pastor? Okay. So I can pray for you. Just hold my hands. Father, by a divine visitation, everything that the enemy has stolen in this family, restore. Restore. Restore finances. Restore finances. Restore finances. And I see the Lord releasing a spiritual gift on you right now. 
let it be so as that gift is activated let it be a restoration let the years of sorrow be replaced by the years of joy let the years of sorrow be replaced by the years of joy receive that anointing now receive that anointing right now ah Is your husband alive, ma? Uh huh. And God just kept telling me, you lost your husband. How long? Last year, June. Last year, June. In the month of June. In June. Hold on. When I held you, God said, you lost your husband. And this loss of your husband affected many things yes, sir. in your family. Yes, sir. Did he die by accident? No, sir. Sickness? No, sir. How, how did he die? He was shot? Yes, sir. He was shot. Because yes, I saw, I see that his death was mysterious. Yes, That's sir. why I said whether accident or his death was mysterious. It affected many things. Even in the area of finance. Yes, sir. You are looking okay, but you have really been struggling as I'm seeing. Yes, sir. You have really, really been struggling. Yes, sir. You have children? Yes, sir. I'm seeing like between three to four. You have, okay, you have two children. Are you sure you have two children? Yes. Two completely? Yes. How many of them are staying with you? Two. Two of them are staying with you? It Is there any other? Huh? It was three. I lost one. Uh -huh. It was three. You lost one. And that's two, ba? Uh -huh. God is about to restore you, man. This service is for you. Now, God is going to touch your finance in a way that you, 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 you never imagine. I'm seeing some money owed. Whether it's your husband or you, I don't know. But I see a huge amount of money owed. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, if God be God, God said I should prophesy to you within the next 90 days every part of that money is paid Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. it's okay madam weep not God has visited you break every chain and I want to bless your hands do you do business start. you are yet to start yes, you want to start need, a business I need money to you start. need money to no start. you need favor not money Amen. I tell you this, your pastor is here. Yes, sir. And I submit under God. Seven to fourteen days from now. Yes, sir. There's a favor coming upon your life. Amen. Every part of that capital you need is coming and you start. That's what God said. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, let it be so. In seven to fourteen days from now unusual uncommon favor the psalmist says make us glad as in the days when we have seen sorrow and let the beauty of god be upon us he said establish thou the works of our hands yeah establish the works of our hands i declare in the name of jesus whatever you touch turns to gold whatever you touch will prosper take that anointing for prosperity now take it now Take it now in the name of Jesus. And I'm prophesying the same to seven other people here intending to start a business. I release your capital now. Within seven days, I release your capital now. It's done, madam. God bless you. It's done. Hmm? It's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. Are your children in school? God says you will never beg to sponsor them. Amen. That's what God said I should tell Amen. you. Amen. From today, as a sign that all this will happen, from tomorrow, mark the next seven days. Just help that lady here, please. The next seven days, you will see uncommon favor. Amen. And the favor will be the gift of men. God Amen. will be bringing people around your life. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up now. Wave your hands and give God praise. 
Man of God, come. Let's agree for Monica. Father, we agree in the name of Jesus. Visit the family of Monica. Aya. Visit her. We terminate the works of witchcraft. Majambra katambos katayli abakai. Kambras kopala diatamanai. Matosa branda breketeke bai. This is what God is saying to me. Tell them. I see God putting an end to strange deaths around that family. Hmm? Tell her. God is giving her joy in this season. And I see God uprooting the form of witchcraft, the works of witchcraft in that family. And I see what looks like strange death. I don't know whether it has happened or about to happen. Yes, I think just last week, my mom called me and was telling me she went to, like someone died. Someone died? Yeah, she was. Just last week? I think within a week, about two or three people. Two or last three week, people in one like, week? Yeah, because I called her to ask her of what's happening. Yes. The Bible says, Unto God belongeth escapings from death. Father, I agree with your son, and we declare that strange death is cancelled. By the blood of Jesus, we cancel death. We cancel death. We cancel death. We cancel death. death. In the name of Jesus. Your son name is like Lucky. I don't know whether that's a name or a son name. Lucky. I heard that. When I held you, sir. It's done, sir. Please, you can see that. When I held you, I heard that name, Lucky. I just heard Lucky. Not you, but when I heard you, I heard, I heard that name, Lucky. You, it's related to you? Lucky. Lucky. There's somebody related to you like no, that? No, actually, there's somebody that I met of recent from Gombe. Okay. Asking me to pray for him. This, this Lucky that I'm seeing is a son name. It's not the name. It's a son name. And it's connected to someone here who is a lady. It's someone that is connected to one of us here. The person here is a lady. The person that has that lucky as a son name is connected to a lady here. If you find that person, let me know. All of you, Monica? Huh? Monica and Paul. Who is Paul to you? My Ma? brother. Your Paul? My brother. Paul is your brother. Yes. Dark? Yes. Tall? Not tall. Not tall? Yes. Come. And Monica is who? Your aunt. I'll pray for you. You first, I'll pray for you. Then I'll pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, visit Monica. Visit Paul. Where is this Paul? He's in Lagos. I see him, this Paul. I'm seeing him standing and there are things before him and things behind him. And it looks like he's struggling to progress. He's struggling to make motion. I just see him making a great attempt to go forward. I see things ahead of him. I see things behind him. And the Lord wants to put an end to whatever has caused a form of struggle in his life. What does he do? He walks. Where is he walking? With MRS. With MRS. I see him struggling. I see him struggling. Let me just find out exactly where. Because God is showing me two things. Okay? Issue about his job is number one. But then I'm also seeing an emotional issue. His mind. He has been struggling with a lot of mental and emotional issues recently. That's what I'm seeing. You can call him and find out. Okay, I'll do that. And it looks like he tries to make progress. He's doing a lot, but the effort... What he's the progress is not equal to the effort. That's what I'm seeing. Very hard working. He's doing a lot of things to make progress, but the pro, the result is not equal to the struggle. Do you know that about him? Yes. Is that true? Yes. What's wrong with his job? He's a software engineer. 
Huh? Software engineer. Software engineer. He does a lot for his bosses, but he doesn't get the credit. He does a lot of work, but you know, Crazy. financially. Yes, it's not the culture. And is he due a promotion? Because uh, it looks like he has been stuck in yes, a position. Yes, he's due, but. And they have promised again and again yes, and again. Yes, they have. It's a yoke that must be broken. Now, this yoke that will be broken in his life is not just with him. I've seen an issue of delay in your family that God must put an end to. Are you yes. married? Not yet. Not yet. Hold on. This thing about delay, God wants to break it. People struggle, especially for the men who struggle. And then there's also an issue of late marriage that I'm seeing with the woman. Even if it happens, it happens with a lot of strain. How many sisters do you have? I have four. You have four? Yes. How many of them are married? One. Just one? Yes. I'm the eldest. Okay, you are the eldest. Yes. The one that is married is... My younger sister. Is your, yes, my younger sister. Is, the, is a younger? Yes. Immediate younger sister? Immediate. Don't worry. God will put an end to it now. Amen. Don't worry. These are tears of joy. I want to trace this issue to the root. And God is showing me that it's coming from your mother's side. Hmm? God is showing me that it's coming from your mother's side. This thing is an ancestral thing. And it's coming from... I'm not saying that there are witches there. I'm just yeah. saying it's an ancestral thing that God wants to deal with. Are you ready? Yes, God sir. is going to set your family free. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. And even these tears you are crying, you have cried it before. Yes. Even recently. You. Yes, I see a lot of disappointments around you that God wants to put an end to. Amen, sir. Amen. You believe that? Yes, I do. Just hold my hand. Father, enough is enough. Visit this family. Visit, help her. Visit this family. Huh? What I'm seeing is a strong anointing that will come upon her. Let every yoke in this family be broken. Lord, visit Paul wherever he is. Visit Auntie Monica. Visit this family by a mighty anointing. By a mighty anointing. By a mighty anointing. That's it. In the name of Jesus. God says weep not. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, I told you. It's going to be very heavy on her. Weep not. The season of pain has come to an end. In Jesus name. Who are these ones? Let me know. Sir? Who is Paul to you sir? It's my immediate brother. Your immediate brother? Yes sir. Okay. Mm. Immediate elder or younger? No younger. Younger, younger brother. Yes sir. Is he married? He's married. He's sir. married. Yes, sir. With children. With four children. Huh? Four children. Four children. Yes, sir. I don't know why as I'm looking at you, I'm seeing the Lord taking me somewhere, like another state. Where is Paul? He's in Gombe State. He's in Gombe State. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. As I saw you, I saw an arrow. Come on, give Jesus a clap offering for that. I saw an arrow. Now watch. This Paul looks like you. Yes, sir. Exactly. People are almost of the same height and stature. Exactly, sir. Go and tell Paul that God has favored him. This is his time. Shake my hand. Tell him that it's a season of favor. There is going to be an anointing for double favor that is coming on him. Amen. And whatever he has lost, God is restoring it. Amen. Go and tell him that. Where All does right, he work? He's in Gombe State. Where does he work? I, okay, you work with Federal Road Safety. Government, right? The federal Road Safety. Road Safety. Yes, sir. Ah. Tell him it's a season of favor. Okay, sir. Now, I see a shaking in his office. Go and tell him. All right, sir. I see a shaking in his office. Okay, sir. And that shaking will be for the falling and rising of many. But him, he will rise. Amen. That's what God said I should tell him. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes, 
Who is building in your family? Who is uh, doing a building project? Uh, my youngest brother, he's a soldier. He's doing a build. Ah, yes, uh, I saw. I saw this correct. Yeah, really, I wanted to say I've seen first people in your family. First, first, first. Yeah, yeah. This building I'm talking about is ongoing, right? My own is yes, it's own. If first, your own, your yes, own. Yes, yes, it's going on. Because I'm seeing a building that has gotten close to Lintel level. I'm seeing around Lintel level. It are rich there. In fact, the there is there are still parts portion of the house they are casting. I see wood. That's what I'm seeing. Is it true? That is it, sir. It's true, sir. Your own? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That is good, sir. One, two, three. I'm seeing four rooms, but it looks like three bedrooms. It's three bedrooms, sir. <laughs> Break every chain. Break every chain. Are you ready for this, sir? Yes, sir. Really ready. In the name that is above every other name. Amen. Before the end of this year, you are finishing that building. Amen. That's what God said I should tell you. Thank you, sir. The, do you have faith for what I'm about to tell you, sir? Yes. You are your brother. Now, this is your brother, eh? Yes, sir. Where he's building. Mm -hmm. Where he's building. Zaria. I'm seeing Zaria. he's Zaria. building in Zaria. Yes, sir. Um, I'm seeing an issue where the money he's putting into the building. The result is seen. It doesn't look like the money he's building. And I'm also seeing that not too long he had problem with some of the workers. Actually, that is real. True, right? Uh, yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Like they are not the money is yeah. not uh -huh. because the money is not coming. It's, it, yes. Yeah, so he's putting money, but it's not seen like it. Yeah, yes, now sir. this is what God said I should tell you. That there is a grace for finishing projects. The reason why that grace is coming on you is because your father. Is he late? He's late, sir. Uh -huh. Your father had problems with finishing what he starts. Yeah, it's true, sir. That's really? what I'm seeing. Yeah, really, sir. Even when it comes to farm, mm. did your your father did farming? Uh, yes, yes. Even when it comes to farming, your father had problem with he will start, but, but he will not finish. Actually, he will true. start, but he will not finish. Yes, but God is bringing a grace upon you and your brothers. Amen. To break that status quo. Amen. Open your two hands, sir. And in the name of Jesus, no, just hold it out. I declare in six months, finish your building. Amen. In six months, finish your building. In Jesus' name. Give God praise. It's done, sir. Okay, let me let me know. Who are the people out? Let me know. You Paul? Okay, let's just come. Let me just pray generally for the Pauls. Father, visit them in the name of Jesus. And even you, there is an anointing coming on you. As God is visiting Paul, is visiting you. Just stand behind her. There's such a strong anointing coming on her. As God is visiting Paul, is visiting you. Is Paul your brother? Is your uncle? Yes, sir. As God is visiting Paul, is visiting you. Father, in the name of Jesus, visit him. New season. Who is Paul to you? My elder brother. Your elder brother. Yes. Okay. Where is he? He's in Meduguri. He's in Meduguri here. Yeah. Yes. I see an intervention in the area of his job. Mm -hmm. Divine intervention coming for his job. Mm -hmm. Go and tell him that. Huh? It's well. If I've prayed for you, just go back. Okay, you too. Huh? Monica and Paul. Let the captivity turn to an end. Come to an end. Come to an end. In the name of Jesus. And I don't know who is trusting God for the fruit of the womb in your family. But I see a miracle baby coming. When I looked at you in the spirit, I saw your stomach swollen. And the Lord says he's bringing a miracle. Huh? Please, this mic is not working. Who is it? The wife of my brother. The wife of your brother? She's pregnant now. Aha. Uh -huh. 
receive delivery in the name of Jesus. Hi, the pregnancy is looking heavy. It looks like twins. What I'm seeing. It looks like twins. In the name of Jesus. It's done. God bless you. Okay, shake my hand. Father, bless. Come. Just that. Who is it? Who? Huh? Monica. Monica. My mom. Your mom. Come, 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 come. I rebuke affliction. Hmm? Yeah. That they will not call you and tell you there is affliction in your bo- mother's body. Amen. Right now, I'm even seeing the condition with her eyes. Yeah. Have, huh? Yes, she has well, eye problems. She has eye problems. Yeah, it's hold my hand father in the name of jesus we come against affliction in the name of the lord jesus we call her healed and restored and restored and restored does she have anything to do with the government yes she works with the government yes i'm seeing some money that is owed her that will be paid go and tell her that thus says the lord god is restoring what is owed in jesus name it's done God bless you. You, sir? Who again? Monica. Are we ready? I'm going to pray for the sick now. Are we ready? All right. Monica. Who is Monica to you? Your friend. She's not married. She's not married. You see, I will have to just control myself and stop at this point. If, I, if we go on, the time will just go. And there is a lot. I want us to live here in good time. Okay? But God is visiting her. In the name of Jesus. Go and tell her to prepare for a wedding soon. Okay, sir. Okay, Did you hear sir. what I said? Yes, sir. Go and tell her to prepare yes, sir. for a wedding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was how I casually held that lady on Sunday, isn't it? Uh-huh. You don't need too much force for the miracle to happen. Go and tell her whether there's a man or not. Yes, sir. Whether there's a card or not. Yes, sir. Prepare because I see a wedding coming. And Amen, come sir. hastily. In the Amen, name of sir. Jesus. Amen, sir. Now, I want to pray for you before everybody. Can we all stand? Those of you that are sick, if you are sick, please, I want you to come. If you are sick in your body of any kind, some of you, the, the illness recurs. It is a recurring situation. Wherever you are, please don't be ashamed. Come, I want to pray. Please arrange them to stand on a good line. Sister Comfort, stand. I want to pray for you before everybody here. Bring it down a little. Now, I know that I have, by the privilege of God's grace, I know I have prayed for you many times, prophesied and you have seen some of them come to pass but I want to say this before everybody Hmm? and the deal between me and you is that I'm saying it in public and when it happens come back and share it here Now, you see the thing about your life is even if you don't share testimonies, the way God will bless you it will announce itself so it's good you share the testimony okay God is about to enlarge you heavily. I'm seeing something that will bring you something that will connect you with agencies. That's what I'm seeing. Okay? Yes, sir. Look like companies, look like government agencies. I'm seeing you in between them. I'm seeing something, maybe a deal or something that will connect you. Okay? Amen. Now, God is going to put a heavy investment on your life in the area of finances. I know you know. Yes. But I'm telling you because it's about to be a new season. I saw a fleet of cars. Not just cars. Vehicles. Some will be your private. Some will be for business. Okay? In fact, one of the vehicles I'm seeing is what looks like um, what do you call all of these vehicles that can carry many people? Like a space bus or a Siena bus or not a bus, like 
a hand, those kind of vehicles. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing two, three, four vehicles. And what I'm seeing will happen within 18 months from now. Amen. Amen. Let me stop there. The other ones will come in good time. I said 18 months. Amen. Two of them will happen within six months. Amen. When it happens, come back. Because I'm seeing this vehicle, some will be used for commercial duties. And then I'm seeing one for your personal vehicle. Amen. God is about to put so much investment on you that you did not pray for. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, let it be so. By the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I declare the two lift gates are open to you. Amen. Supernatural wealth. God will confirm all that he has said in Jesus' name. Amen. Are these all sick? My goodness. Okay. Please arrange them. I need to pray. Lay hands on them. Pray for them. We don't do this in every miracle service. But today God said I should lay hands. Now, as I minister to them, I want you to... Where's Pastor Sam? Please join with Bishop. No, it's Bishop that will do that. He's give it for the ministers. You stay and help me arrange. I want the two of you, you and Bishop, as I pray for them, check them. Know the condition. And know if they are healed. And once you get two, three testimonies and above, interrupt me and call it out, okay? I don't know why God said I should do this. This is going to be enormous, okay? But I'm going to lay my hands on you and pray. I want you to listen. I want you to believe God. Look at me, all of you. Look at me. Forget about the situation. I'm seeing reports flying upon some. In fact, I'm seeing an x ray. I'm seeing an x ray flying. Uh -huh. That's why I was pointing. I'm seeing reports flying over all of you. Listen to me. It doesn't matter how long the situation has taken. God is about to step in and bring an end to that infirmity. Okay? Now, when I finish praying for them, I will pray for those that are connected to us that are not here. You will call them on phone and then I'll pray for them and watch the God of wonders this night. Are we ready? Those of you in the congregation, stretch your hands towards them and pray. What you pray for them is what will come to you. You sent your word and heal my disease I am the Lord my healer you are the Lord that healed me you are the Lord my healer You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord. God showed me. I'm going to lay hands on them very quick. I'll do it very quick. God showed me a health condition that is almost 21 years. God showed me a particular health condition that is almost or 21 years. Come, sir. Okay, find out. Find out how long and what the condition is. I'm going to just stretch your hands towards them, pray. I'm going to be very quick. As I touch you, as I touch you, it's gone. Amen. Believe me, wherever it is. Amen. If God leads me to prophesy on you, I'll do that. If not, I will just touch you. And that's it. Some of you may come heavy under the anointing. And when they are done, please, Pastor Sam. And um, Pastor Sam, I think you should be here. Huh? I think you should be here while he's there. Let's confirm. We'll take two, three testimonies. Once you get a testimony, interrupt me and tell me what God has done. Get him a mic, please. Very quick. Get him a mic. Huh? What's the condition? Oh, there's a report. There's a report. Okay. What's the, um, what's the issue? Has, uh, there's an affliction he has for over 20, since 2003. He just falls down on his own. Since 2003 is yes. about 18 years going to 20. Okay. Okay, we need a medical personnel. Yeah. 
Come, sir. No, this is the end. This night. This night. This night, sir. Your salvation has come. What's the issue? Let me know. Having huh? focal seizure without awareness. Focal seizure. Yes, sir. Okay, that's what More explains. Like, it just falls. Yes, sir. Okay. Epilepsy. More of like epilepsy. Okay, more of like epilepsy. Yes, sir. abnormal discharge of. There's a brother I prayed for um two weeks ago. Sorry, where is he? After the service, I prayed for you two weeks ago in compassion. Where are you? No, I mean I prayed on the, the same condition. There's a brother. No, not him. I know the face. He has something to do with theological or something. If he's around, let me know. I'm just calling him because God healed him. It's epilepsy. Stretch your hands towards them. So hold my hand. This devil of affliction, I command you to go now. I command you to go out of him. <laughs> you foul spirits. Get out of him now. 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 They are not one. I'm seeing demons jumping out of his stomach. I said you should pray. Come out of him now. You foul demon of affliction. Where is, uh, where is hope? Please play. I'll pray for you. Don't worry. Just play for me, please. I need, you see, I need that sound because the anointing, that's what makes the anointing work. Let him go. Out of him now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. sing for me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your heart, and it is, and it is here. You are the Lord, my healer.
to our God. Hallelujah. Who brought who came with this boy? Who came with this young boy? Okay, it was one you brought last Sunday. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with you? Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll pray for you. Eh? Jesus will heal you now, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, take this kata away. And I declare healing in 15 minutes. Let your nasal pipes be free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Check him out. Let's know what's done. Oh, every, everything? Okay, just you, you and your son. Is this your first son? Yes. Your first son? No, it's not the first. Not the first? Yes. Okay. Okay. How are you? Uh, leave her, leave her with them. Okay, you, you are also sick. He's sick? Yes. How old do I have? No, 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 not him. Not him. I mean you. You hold my hand. Listen, madam. Listen. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. God is going to heal your son. Listen to me, madam. Look at me. God is taking away pains. But I see an issue of growth in your body that God wants to remove. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Yes. I say I see an issue of growth. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know. Where is it? problem in my stomach. Oh, this is a, it is a growth in your stomach? Yes. Are you pregnant as well? No. It's a growth. Yes, they say it's infection. They say it's an infection. Mm. And it's what has grown to this size. It used to give me sleepless night. Wow. It's only in the night. Only in the, the night? Pen. Okay. The Have you been operated before? Yes. Have you been operated before? No. Not yet. Madam, please just stand aside. God is going to heal you and he will heal you now. Okay? It's okay, young boy. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. Leave him. Okay, when, when he's done crying, I'll pray for the mom. You too, your sick man? Hold my hand. Put the other hand on your back. I rebuke every backache. Every affliction from your back down to your legs. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Healed. Healed. I command every infection to go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I touch you, that's it. In the name of Jesus. Those of you in the congregation, are you praying? In the name of Jesus. Hold my hand, madam. In the name of Jesus, affliction comes to an end now. 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 Help her. That's the power of God I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. Father, 
heal heal in the name of Jesus goes and never returns in the come mother look at me just look at my eyes just keep looking come out of her look at me out of her out out I'm seeing all kinds of things but God is healing you that devil of affliction leaves your body now in the name of Jesus is it for you or daddy okay for uh, one of your legs arthritis okay yes. on your bones yes father and end has come in the name of jesus this problem is not only with you there's someone else in your family with this oh, issue. my mom your mom right yes, yes as god is healing you god is healing her Amen. in the name of the lord jesus it's well and i say a breakthrough coming your way Amen. Hmm? Amen. Mm. in the name of jesus heal There's a miracle here. Right. Yeah, talk to me, sir. So, Miss Juliana Sule, for over five months, she could not do two minutes without taking water. But she, when she stepped her foot into this atmosphere, over four hours now, she has not taken any water and she's healthy and strong. There are some conditions without names for more than five months. Who? You? Come, my dear. Come, madam. The Lord perfect you. Are you a music minister? He said psalmist. No. Yes. I thought he said psalmist. Yes. Juliana Sule. Okay. okay, Juliana Sule. Okay. Perfected in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And I see the Lord removing an infection from your kidney. Amen. From both your kidney. In the name of Jesus. Give God praise. It's done. Amen. Still this line. Okay, let me just pray very briefly. Yeah, I need to. Okay, your boy is quiet now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, can you stretch your hand towards this woman? Put your hand here. How old is this growth now? Huh? 
It's over 30 something years. Over 30 something years you have been with this group. Okay. Huh? It will come and go. I pray for you specially. God is asking me to work a miracle, meaning that I will do something to demonstrate. How are you? God bless you. Have I met you before? Healed. In the name of Jesus. Look at me, sir. And in addition, give me your hand. In addition to whatever it is, I see God also touching your eyes. You will not have an eye condition. You will not have an eye condition. Father, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, let your healing balm flow. In the name of Jesus. Healed. In the name of Jesus. Healed. In the name of Jesus. Strength comes. In the name of Jesus. Hold my hand, sir. There's something heavy coming on you, but God is also healing you. Father, release that anointing. In the name of Jesus. Wait. Are you a man of God, sir? I work with a bishop in huh? my church. I work with my bishop in my church. Okay, you work with your bishop? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Because I see the hand of God on your life. You. Now, I didn't say this so that you go and stop working with him. No. Continue there. God is training you. Amen. I see an evangelistic anointing on your life. Hmm? Amen. I see an evangelistic anointing on your life. And that anointing, with God will do signs and wonders with it. Do you hear what I said? Yes. Keep serving. In due time, God will tell you what he's going to do through you. Okay? And I also pray that there will be a quickening of visions and dreams upon your life. The understanding and the increase of it. In the name of Jesus. Father, let it be so for him. Healed. In the name of Jesus. Apostle, there's a miracle here again. Talk to me, sir. Sister Muruna A. Jonathan. Oh, that's even my son name. Uh, my name, rather. Okay. She woke up today with a stomach pain. She woke up with a stomach pain. Since in the morning. Okay. And then instantly after praying for her, she received her healing. It disappeared instantly. It disappeared. Is it because I, I allowed you to sit down? That's why you are celebrating God like that at the back. This thing is around I'm seeing a problem around this side okay yeah do you like a pain I can't bend you can't bend yes you'll bend now mm-hmm. I'll pray for you you'll bend now mm-hmm. hold this mic My dear, hold my hands. Healed in the name of Jesus. Father, healed. Healed. Whatever looks like a long time situation leaves. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I've not prayed for you before. Okay, hold my hand. From where? From where? State Locus. You came from State Locus. All of our feet here. I'm going to ask you to breathe in three times. You hear me? Okay. Number one. Number two. Number three. That's it. You're here. Sir, there's an Check instant yourself. miracle here again. All right. Thank you, Sister Mary Joseph. Yeah, Sister Mary. For over two weeks, she has uh-huh. been battling with left side of her stomach. She cannot bend as it were and instantly after praying for her she received her healing 
And the second testimony. Yes, go ahead. She came in with a stomach pain, but now there's no more pain. Left side stomach pain here. Yeah. Give Jesus praise. It's done, my dear. Check yourself. Hold on. <laughs> check. Do you check check yourself? Do you feel the pain? No, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I just I told her to declare a word of faith and instantly she was healed. How long has that pain been? Almost two years. Huh? Two years. For, for two years. You were operated upon and just now it's gone it's not scam it's real god bless you perfect hey come let me bless you now let me give you an anointing father in the name of jesus i pray she lives with a touch of your power amen fresh anointing comes on her never be the same amen in the name of jesus amen make sure you keep loving god i see god doing a lot of things with your life in jesus name amen. perfected in Jesus name healed in the name of Jesus perfected how are you bless you in the name of Jesus strength comes in you too father take the affliction away now in Jesus name have I prayed for you okay all right what's wrong with you you do have headaches. Even now you're having the headache. You don't have the headache again. It comes and goes. Okay, it comes and goes. Say after me in the name of Jesus. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Headache has no place. Therefore, I decree and declare I am healed and I'm made whole. In Jesus' name. That's it. It's over. Come, young man, let me pray for you. Yes, you come. I'm done? You too? Okay, healed in the name of Jesus. Hold my hand. Fresh grace. Upon your prayer life, fresh grace. Amen. In the name of Jesus. There's something new that will come upon you in this season. I don't know what it is, but I see the anointing for the prophetic activated. And in the name of Jesus, I quicken it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now just stay around him because it's going to get very heavy. In Jesus' name. Yes, one. Okay. Yeah, I need to pray. Can we rise and just celebrate God? Thank God for the testimony so far. Stand. Just put your two hands. In the name of Jesus. All right. Get me a, get me water, please. Don't worry. Give us the next ten minutes, and we'll be done. 
This is miracle service. That's why we have to attend to issues. Do you agree with me? Uh -huh. Normal services, we don't do this. Now, God says I should walk a miracle. Most times, I don't like God. I don't always like God having me go like this. Because when I do it, some people will me read a lot of meaning to it. Okay? But it's a walking of a miracle. So you will see me doing something physical. Please don't get offended. Okay? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just acting by the leading of the Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, life upon this water. And I declare that every deposit of darkness in this body is flushed out. As she drinks this water, every deposit is flushed out. Whatever was inseminated into you by the marine world comes out of your body in the name of Jesus. Seal is sealed. I didn't bring it from my house before you say it's sealed. Open and give a letter drink. Are we ready? I'm going to pray for those of us that have relatives or friends who are sick. Are you ready? To call them. We are going to call them and pray for them. You will hear nerve-breaking testimonies now. Please, upstanding everybody, please. Let's be very sensitive now. She drank. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every deposit in your body comes out. Go back a little. Uh -huh. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Just one hand. Melt by the power of God. Amen. Melt by the power of God. Amen. Hold on. Bring bring it down. Very sensitive. Please. Whatever was deposited comes out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Melt and come out. 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 She said for 30 something years. If you have never seen affliction, this is real affliction. Can we can we step aside, please? I want to do something. Please. And the proof that God is going to heal him. Check. Make sure you watch the size. It will start reducing now. Just watch. In the name of Jesus, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I command this group to melt. Every spirit that has masqueraded as a group, come out of her. Deposit of the marine world, come out. And in the name of Jesus, melt. 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 You feel something? You feel, you feel something going through your body? In the name of Jesus. Out! Come out of our body. Amen. Come out of our body. Come out of our body. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Breathe in three times. One. Two. Three. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You feel something around your abdomen? No. Do you feel anything here? No. 
You feel anything around your body? Don't worry. I see I see something happening there. You guys were not watching. Glory. Look at it. Look at this. You, I, I told you to watch and see. Yes, sir. This side, this side was protruded. Yes, sir. Look at the fold. Madam, look at, look at, look at your stomach. Huh? Don't, don't come out from the anointing. Look at your stomach, madam. This is life, okay? Was this, was your stomach like this or more than this? It was more than this. It was more than this. Yes. It was more than this. Yes. Thirty years of affliction is made whole. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Go to scan three days from now. Okay? And hear the news that will come from the doctor. Amen. It's done. Can you give Jesus praise? I apologize. Sorry. Amen. There was, we don't have a camera here. You would have seen what just happened. Over 30 something years of affliction, a growth. Stomach was protruded. Healed by the power of God. Are we ready? Apostle, Take your phones. Okay. There's a testimony here. Yes. Mr. Jonathan Stephen Wakawa. Uh -huh. His name is Jonathan? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Go ahead, sir. When he came into this atmosphere, he was shivering. But okay. after you praying for him, instantly it went off. Those are the demons that caused that thing. Really, that is it, sir. You feel relief now? Yes, now I feel sad still now. Have you ever felt like this before? Never, never, sir. Never? Yes, sir. Since 2003? Three. Two years. 21 years. Come on, give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. This and then will be done. This and then will be done. If you have someone who is sick, a friend, a loved one, a family member, in the next five minutes will be done. Take your phone. If you can, call them. I want to pray. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to do that. No, leave that paper. Leave, leave, leave them. Just leave the paper. Uh -huh. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Take your phone. If you have someone who is sick, or a family member, a loved one, or a friend, whether they are in the hospital or at home, take your phone, call them now. I want to pray. Very simple prayer. Something happened And now I know He touched me And made me whole He touched me Oh He touched me And oh the joy that floods my soul something happened and now I know he touched me can I pray now Some of you may even need to put the phone on loudspeaker so that if there's any reaction right away, you will know. All of you lift your right hand in agreement with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand upon the authority of word that declares that you took our infirmities and you bore our diseases. And in the name of Jesus, let your power go through the airwaves and meet our loved ones, friends, and family members. I take authority against the spirit of infirmity. I take authority against the spirit of affliction. I take authority against the spirit of affliction. And I command you now to leave God's people alone. I command you to leave their bodies now. Leave their bodies now. 
in the name of Jesus, every eye condition is healed now. Amen. Every eye condition is healed now. Amen. Every ear and nose condition is healed now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I take authority against kidney infections. Kidney conditions. Conditions with your ureter. With your blood and your urinary system. In the name that is above every other name. Let that devil leave your body now. Amen. I speak life to your organs now. Amen. Life to your organs now. Amen. Life to your organs now. Amen. I come against every condition with the liver. And every other organ around your abdomen and your trunk. I declare life comes into those organs now. Amen. Be healed now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every pain from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I rebuke that pain now. Amen. I rebuke that pain now. Amen. Every form of blood condition. HIV, sickle cell, anemia, what have you. By the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I command life comes into your blood now. Amen. I purify your blood streams now. Amen. And I command healing now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every condition with the limb, whether your hands or your feet, whether arthritis, whatever the condition will be, I command the strength of God comes into you right now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I come against every form of growth, cancer, tumor, fibroid, wherever you are deposited in the bodies of God's people, come out of their bodies now. Amen. Come out of their bodies now. Amen. I command those growths to melt by the power of God now. Amen. Melt by the power of God now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Every form of headache, migraine, one-sided, whatever it is, healing comes to you now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And Father, every condition I did not mention, right now let your power go through the airwaves. Amen. Turn impossible situation into a testimony. Amen. I declare the affliction is over. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wave your hands and give God praise if you know it's done. Inside, outside, wave your hands. Bless the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now those of you that prayed for them, you can check. Check and let us know if there are improvements or there are healing. And the rest of you, please stand. I want to prophesy on us and then we'll close. If there, is any, if there is anybody who is healed, check those on phone. If there is anybody, Bishop, let me know. Please lift your hands. I want to pray. Speak over our lives and we'll be done. Where is your sister? Cinda, where is she? Come. Where is Grace? Your Grace. Okay, you don't want to come. Okay, no problem. Just come. Hold my hand. There's something new that God is doing with you in this season. And right now, I activate it by the anointing that is needed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Fresh. Fresh. An encounter that will change your life and change your walk with God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, come. Father, I unblock every well of the prophetic that is in her. This is what the Lord said I should tell you. Your spiritual walk with God will no longer be, the oppression of the Spirit will no longer be rise and fall. It will no longer be up and down. The stability that God is bringing. Okay? There's stability. I'm not saying you are a bad person, no. 
but the stability that God is bringing in the operation of the spirit around your life but in the name of Jesus in addition to that give me your hand I unblock every well of the prophetic step into a new season if you have ever heard God you will begin to hear him now Lord let it be activated in the name of the Lord Jesus Guide her back to her seat. Guide her back to her seat. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus. Is there any testimony or I should pray? If you get any testimony, let me know. I'm about to pray. This is, for me, the most important part. I pray this prayer. We'll make an altar call. And that's all for tonight. Please lift your hands. Some of you, this is where your miracle is. It's not just one more declaration you are receiving. It's a word that is bringing a shift over your life and your destiny. Please lift your hands. And agree with me with the loudest amen that you can. Those online that are following, make sure you connect and receive. God is doing great things here. Father, in the name of Jesus. Every satanic cycle of rising and falling. Every demonic cycle of delay, retrogression, stagnation that has existed over your life or your family. My goodness, I see the power of God that will come upon some people. Right now, I command those devils to live your life. Out of your families. Out of their lives, out of their families, out of their lives, in the name of Jesus. Every evil that was programmed into your life by the night or by the day in your ignorance and is at work causing a cyclical progression. It looks like you are making progress, but you are just moving in cycle. Whether through the dream or vision of the night, whether through molestation of demonic spirit, or whether as a result of ancestral or bloodline issues, right now in the name that is above every other name, I command those devils to live your life now. I abort those demonic programming now. I have brought that programming now. And in the name of Jesus, I declare upon you, I replace the cycles of the enemy with a cycle of joy. Cycle of peace. Cycle of prosperity. Cycle of progress. I say unto you, move forward. 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 Open your two hands before you. The Bible says it will establish the works of our hands. I decree and declare in the name that is above every other name. That an anointing comes on your hand. Such that whatever you touch will turn to gold. <laughs> you need to understand this prayer. Job said, I washed my steps with butter. And the rock poured out for me rivers of oil. Every business, every investment, whatever it is that you do with these hands, I declare that these hands are anointed. Help them. I declare that these hands are anointed now. I anoint these hands now. And I declare that through these hands, signs and wonders will be wrought. Signs and wonders will be wrought. Miracle testimonies. Help that lady at the back. Miracle testimonies. Let me pray for your business. There's something called resurrection power. Every business that is dead or dying now. I don't care how long the situation has been. I don't care the limitation. I speak to you and to your business. Let life come to that business now. 
I declare life now. Come alive now. Come alive now. Come alive now. I declare shift of level in your transactions. I move you from thousands to tens of thousands. From tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands. From hundreds of thousands to six zeros. From six zeros to seven zeros. Receive that grace now. In the name of Jesus. Place your two hands on your head. Malanto Baranda Bakaski Paha. Please give me five minutes and we are done tonight. The Bible says, Thou shalt anoint, thou shalt exalt my horn as the unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. As your two hands are laid on your head, I decree and declare, receive a double portion anointing now. Receive a double portion anointing now. Anointing for favor. Help that person at the back. Anointing for increase. Anointing for increase. Anointing for promotion. It is yours now. In Jesus. Please keep your hands on your head. Some of you after this night. A long awaited testimony. Is coming to you. Help them at the back. Listen to me. Anyone here that is due for promotion. Either you are due for promotion. Or you are due for a change of job. Or you are due for a new job. Your miracle job is about to come. Keep your hands on your head. Keep your hands on your head. Father in the name of Jesus. I stand as your prophetic voice. Help them. And I decree and declare. By the rod of this higher priesthood. Let the book of remembrance be open for your children. Let the book of remembrance be open for your children. And in the name of Jesus receive your promotion. Receive your promotion. Receive miracle jobs. Receive miracle jobs. Receive miracle job in the name of Jesus. Put your hands on your head. I want to pray against the spirit of death. Okay, put your right hand on your forehead. Bring down your left hand. Please take very seriously what is happening. After, there is no way your life will remain the same after this prayer. Father, anyone that has been sealed by the enemy for death, any family that is being trailed by the spirit of death or affliction, you foul demon of death, you know my voice. I command you in the name of Jesus, let God's people go now. Let God's people go now. Let God's people go now. In the name of Jesus. I erase the seal of death on your life. I erase the seal of death on your family. Affliction comes to an end now. Comes to an end now. Comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that it is well with you. Put your hands down. I want to pray for your spiritual lives now. How many of you are ready to receive? Stretch your two hands before you. This is the last prayer and I'll be done. After that, I'll make an altar call for those who are not saved. But a mighty anointing is about to rest upon you. Father, in the name of Jesus, anyone whose prayer life is dead or has been under attack, you used to wake up and pray in the night, you can no longer wake up again. Or whenever you pray, you fall asleep or you are very tired. There is an attack on your prayer life. In the name of Jesus, I help them at the back. Help them. I command that prayer life to come alive now. Let the spirit of grace and supplication come upon your people now. 
Come upon them now. Come upon them now. Put your two hands on your stomach. Father, in the name of Jesus, I activate every spiritual gift that is domiciled in your people. There are seven people that I'm seeing that will come up under a loud anointing now. A mighty anointing will come upon seven people. Every spiritual gift that is dormant in you, I call it out now. I call it forth 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 now. now. Help them. I awaken the gift of prophecy. Everyone that has the anointing for the prophetic, right now in the name of Jesus, I stir up that anointing. I stir up that anointing. I stir up that anointing. Help them. I stir up prophetic wells. Prophetic wells. Prophetic wells. Prophetic wells. The gift for the miraculous, the gift for signs and wonders. You have desired it. You have desired it. And I declare and decree, receive it now. By your hands you will wrote signs and wonders. By your hands you will wrote miracles. In the name of Jesus. Father, anyone that is called into ministry of any kind, music ministry, just the strings, music ministry, word ministry, whatever it is, Father, I pray that mantles be released from the heavens. Put your hands before you, your two hands before you. And everyone that is called into any form of ministry. Prayer number one. If in case you don't know what that ministry is. By the power of the anointing. Help them at the back. I command it to manifest now. Just be quiet. Don't say amen. Manifest now. Manifest now. Manifest now. That's it. Manifest now. Manifest now. Manifest now. Manifest now. Help that young man wearing white. I see the hand of God coming on him. Help him. Now number two. In the name of Jesus, stretch your hands before you. I'm releasing a new dimension for your ministries. This level of grace is too small. God is about to shift you to another level. The Bible says from glory to glory as by the Spirit of God. Father, let mantles fall. And I activate new dimensions of grace. New dimensions of grace. New dimensions of grace. New dimension of grace. Of grace. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Young lady, the one putting on that red maroon. Yes, you. Stretch your two hands and look at me from where you are. Just look straight into my eyes. Something is coming on you now. Receive it. Mighty touch. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. I speak over all the men in this place. Every man, yeah. And I decree and declare new dimensions of prosperity. I command everything that you do to progress with speed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And the final prayer of all. I decree and declare there is such a grace called speed. The Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And he guided his lawns and outran the chariots of of Ahab. Lift your hands up. Father, in the next seven seconds, 
Let the grace for supernatural speed be activated. As I count to seven, activate it upon people. Activate it upon businesses. Activate it upon marriages. Upon relationships. Upon finances. Upon every ministry represented here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. That's it. Speed. 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 There is a young man that is, I don't know, watching us, whether by Facebook or something. There is a young man watching us by Facebook. God is about to give you speed. I see you into a business. I see you, you do business. God is about to give you speed. Both speed in terms of promotion and speed in terms of profits. In the next 30 days, you will make a profit you never made the last one year. Whoever that young man is, speed. In Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Very quickly, while we are standing, we are almost done. If you are here and you need to give your heart to the Lord. You have heard the word. You have experienced the power of God in this place. Please, all standing. All standing. No movement. All standing. No movement, please. You have heard the word. You have seen the power of God manifested. And you know you need Jesus. You know you need to make your ways right to Him. We can't close this meeting no matter how far the time has gone. Without giving you an opportunity. Or perhaps you used to be a believer, many things have happened and you have derailed. You don't know where you are right now with God. You, not, you want to rededicate. I'm going to count to seven if you are here. Please make your way to the front. If you need Jesus, you need to be born again. You need to be saved. Or you are here and you need to rededicate your life afresh. I'm going to count to seven if there is any like that. Don't be ashamed. Whether you are outside or you are inside, I want you to make your way to the front. I'm going to count seven. One, two, three. Please be snappy. We are out of time. Four, run like there is fire on the mountain. God is convicting your heart right now. Hear the voice of God and don't delay. Four, five, six, seven. Oh, oh, I thought it was a boy. <laughs> it's well. Uh, God bless you, my dear. Please stretch your hands towards her. Now, young lady, I'm going to lead you to a prayer. I want you to say it after me. Okay? This is the greatest decision you will ever make. Everybody you see here made that decision. And their lives have never been the same. Your life is about to change. Okay? God wants to know you as a person. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge my sins. But I believe that you died and rose from the dead for my salvation. I confess that I receive eternal life. I confess that Jesus is my Lord, both now and forever. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we seal this life in victory and by the blood i decree and declare from today her life will never be the same holy spirit come upon her afresh teach her to walk with you reveal christ to her and let her move from glory to glory in jesus name and amen god bless you can we celebrate god for this one soul what a wonderful